Hey, this is Joe Van Cleve. Welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. And look what we have. This is the three tiny tan typewriter test. What? Yeah, I have the mm, Brother Charger 11, Royal Mercury, and Olympia SF. I'm going to take them out and we're going to sort of review them and compare them. The Tiny Tan Typewriter Trio Test. Stay tuned. Well, here we are at Richmond Park in southeast Albuquerque, south of Knob Hill. One of my favorite little parks to visit. Uh, you know, it's a nice day here in New Mexico, in spite of the most of the rest of the United States in this day in middle of March is having some severe winter weather. We'll probably have ours next week or something. It always changes here. But I took these uh, three little tiny tan typers out out of the house, so get some fresh air and uh, we'll do we'll set them up on a, on a bench over there and uh, let's just review them and kind of compare and contrast their features and aesthetics and performance a little bit and see what we think about them. My intention with this video is to help you guys make some decisions about if you find one of these kind of typewriters. No, it doesn't have to be tan. But if you find one of these kinds of typewriters, maybe making a decision as to whether you might want to get it or wait for another one of a similar brand or make. Let's go take a look at them. Here we are, Richmond Park. I got the three typewriters laid out. We have, in order of the uh, age of when I've first owned them is the Royal Mercury made by Silver Seiko. The second one is the Brother Charger 11. I've had this for a couple months. And the third one on the right over there is the recent edition of the Olympia SF. Let's take a closer look at these and kind of compare them. Well, let's start with the Royal Mercury. This is made, as I said, in Japan by Silver Seiko. Uh, this particular machine sports a pica size font, so 10 characters per inch. It's modern enough that it does have a number one key. There are no tabs on the machine. It does have a touch adjustment right here, okay? Uh, and I usually use it at the low setting. Uh, there are no mechanical issues with this typewriter. I have had this typewriter for over a decade and I haven't had any issues with it. Now I did buy this from John Lewis in Albuquerque so it was fully serviced so it's uh, held up very nicely. Um, it's about the same size as the brother over here, the middle typewriter. It has the hard shell that's integral with a handle and the hard shell is easy to put on. It's very easy to put on and take off on this machine. So it does have this kind of clanky metallic sound. Let me move my microphone closer to it. And you might be able to tell that there is kind of a clanky metallic sound. It's, it's, it's probably the worst sounding uh, of the three uh, typewriters here. Probably the loudest. It does have a ribbon color selector. Like all three of these, it only has the margin release button on the right platen knob. You don't find that very f often in these ultra portables having the margin release on both platen knobs. So you do have to use your right hand for that. Uh, like the other two machines, the, um, the margin release also acts as a, de a key de-jammer, so it'll unjam the keys if you get in a jam there. The feet on the bottom are hard rubber and they're very smooth and the typewriter likes to slide around when you're typing on a smooth desktop so you do need a typing mat and I found that to be true all three of these. Uh, this is modern enough that it has the plus and the equals and an exclamation mark as well as the number one. As far as the aesthetics of it, its appearance, it is a rather boxy shaped typewriter. Uh, not very real pretty uh, in, in the sense of an older style. I don't know how important that is to you, but aesthetics are part of it. Uh, so again, as I said, it has a loud, clanky, tinny sounding uh, typing action. Probably the loudest of the three, I would say. 
Uh, there are no rubber rollers on the bale, the paper bale. The, it's just a, a flat bar of metal with a scale on it. And it's been, as I said, it's been very reliable over the years. So it's reliable. It has more uh, symbols and keys than the other three. It has more feature than the other two. It has more features than the other two, but it is the loudest. Okay, the next typewriter we're going to look at is the middle one, the Brother Charger 11. I've had it for maybe a month, I guess. I, I said it's several months, but probably it's been about a month, a few weeks at least. So uh, this typewriter has an elite font, and it's, it's 12 characters per inch. Uh, the Olympia is also elite, but it's 11 characters per inch. So there, when people say elite, it's not always the same. Um, this typewriter does not have the number one key on it. Neither does it have the equal sign or the plus sign as the uh, Royal did. There are no tabs. None of these machines have tabs. There's no touch adjustment. So there's one feature here the Brother doesn't have that the Royal Mercury does. So there's no touch adjustment. Um, but it's been very mechanically reliable. I'd say, of course, I haven't had it as long, uh, nearly as long as the Royal, but it's it's just as reliable. Um, it's slightly bigger than the Olympia. It's probably about the same size as the Royal. It has the hard shell case with a handle and it goes on and off very easily just like the Royal does. It has um, a light uh, touch to it. Let me move this paper. So uh, let's do a typing test here. I'll move the microphone within about the same distance of the other one. So even though this does not have a, a touch adjustment, it has a lighter touch than the Royal. And it has a slightly higher pitched, kind of a tinny mechanical sound, but it's quieter than the Royal. So I think that makes up for it. So it is, is a rather quiet typewriter for being one of these Japanese portables. Again, um, a nicer touch, a lighter touch. Um, and a ribbon color selector, and of course I have the, the two color red black ribbon, so we got some red ink there to type on. Um, again, like all three of these, the margin release is only on the right knob, so this is something most uh, ultra portables you have to deal with. Again, the margin uh, release also functions as the key dejammer, so margin release will dejam the keys. Um, it has the slippery feet of similar to the Royal Mercury, so you do have to use a typing mat with it. There is no uh, plus, equals, or exclamation mark, so for the exclamation mark, of course, you do a period, backspace, and apostrophe shifted eight. It has the angular, boxy look, similar to the Royal, but is slightly more curved. Maybe there's a little bit of curves to it, but so it's, it is kind of an angular, boxy look, but not quite as much as the Royal. And um, as I said, it's been rather reliable and uh, it's not that bad sounding. There are no rubber rollers on the paper bale, just like on the Royal Mercury. Um, and I think uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the operation of it and with the reliability of it. It seems to be, these brothers seem to be really good machines, even though they might not have quite the the touch and feel of a European ultra portable, but they're, I'm pretty impressed with it. And last but not least is our Olympia SF, which we covered in the previous episode of this series, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with it, but um, the major differences between this and the other two, first of all, it does have the rubber rollers on the paper bale. Uh, it does not have the number one, but it does have plus equals and exclamation marks. So it's kind of a hybrid keyboard, a little newer than these two older ones, but not all the way to having its own dedicated number one key. Um, but it's an interesting machine. It's, I think mechanically, this particular example is not in good of a shape mechanically as the other two. As I indicated earlier, it's an elite font, but it's only 11 characters per inch. No tabs, no number one, no touch adjustment. 
It has that line advancement problem with the carriage return lever that I mentioned in the previous episode. So I have to do, if I do want to do single uh, line spacing, I have to turn the platen knob by hand two clicks and do a manual carriage return by pushing the carriage. Uh, again, like all of these, the margin release button is only on the right platen knob. Uh, there's no ribbon color selector on this one. So if you want to use the other side of the ribbon, you have to flip the ribbon over. It has a slippery feet, so you do have to use a typing mat. It does have a key de-jammer. So if I can get two adjacent type bars, the margin release does de-jam the keys, of course. Now, I mentioned on the other two machines that they had easy to uh, install and take off um, hard shells uh, cases. Uh, but in the case of this um, Olympia, I found it a little difficult to get the case on. And it wants to hang up on the left side here. And you may not be able to see this, but there are some gouges in the left side of the case adjacent to the carriage return lever. So somebody in the past has had problems with this also. But you can't just slip it on easily. You find that the, the left side often hangs up. But this time, of course, when the camera's rolling, it went on just fine. So it has, I think, the best appearance, the nice rounded, uh, slightly lower profile than the other two. It's certainly the smallest of the three. Uh, and it's not really tinny sounding. Let me uh, move my microphone over and you can get a sense of it. I think the... Um, it's not quite as quiet as the Brother Charger 11, but it's less tinny sounding, less mechanical clanky. So it has a, overall a nice sound to it. Um, and one of the things I did to this machine since uh, the last video is that the two side panels here, the original foam insulation was kind of pul uh, urethane foam, and it had just disintegrated into dust. And so what I did is I got some quarter inch thick, dense craft foam with some double sided adhesive sheets and I uh, replaced that with this dense black craft foam and also installed some on the inside of the ribbon cover. Uh, it never originally had insulation on the ribbon cover. So this is kind of an additional sound deadening uh, attempt. And I might add that whatever sound qualities the other two machines have, they could be also improved with the addition of this uh, dense foam insulation. But overall, it's a nice machine. The best looking of the three, in my uh, uh, judgment. Um, if it didn't have this mechanical issue with the um, carriage return lever, I think it would be certainly the best machine of the three. But I, overall, it's a pretty decent typer, and I, I think it's a keeper for sure. You know, the thing about these ultra-portable typewriters is, uh, first of all, I don't know if the term ultra-portable is really a valid term. It's a term I picked up on a, a typewriter discussion forum uh, a while ago, and I kind of like it. But, uh, you know, back in the, in the day of manual typewriters, there were portables, big typewriters with handles on their case. Technically, they were portable, and it kind of reminds me of the early days of uh, personal computers when you had like the Osbournes and the K-Pros, which were like suitcase size little mini microcomputers with a handle, and they weighed 25 or 30 pounds. Technically, they were portable or luggable, but they weren't a laptop, right? So we have these small portable typewriters. You know, they are intrinsically a compromise between portability and lightweight and having full features uh, of a larger typewriter. So there's always going to be some intrinsic trade-offs that you get into when you when you choose one of these small typewriters. But I think some of the the aspects of their performance, like for instance how loud they are, I think that's fairly important because uh, being portable, lightweight, and easy to carry, you're going to want to take them out somewhere, most likely to a public venue, or more so than certainly a medium-sized typewriter. And so typing out in a public venue, you, you have to worry about sound, uh, the noise that they make. So I think there is some t something to that. Now, as I indicated earlier, uh, 
There are things you can do to improve the sound deadening aspect of these typewriters a little bit. In my case, I found some of this black craft foam that I was able to stick on the inside of the body panels. And I might go ahead and try that with these other two typewriters. As I said, I did it with the Olympia SF already. I might try it with the Brother and see how that works out. But uh, it's an interesting comparison. Um, these, these little portables uh, are, are fun typewriters. It's kind of an elusive search finding the perfect typewriter and you know there is no perfect typewriter obviously but uh, you know the really big standard upright typewriters perform quite well beautifully mechanically superior performance superior construction but they're just not portable or even luggable hardly so there are some trade-offs but uh, for us typewriter lovers who like to take our typewriters out in different places uh, we have to put up with having the imperfections of small typewriters, but uh, I love them, and I hope you do too. So my overall impressions of these three machines, um, obviously they're all three keepers, as I say. The uh, Royal Mercury was my beach typer. I've typed with it on the beach in California a number of times. It's proven very reliable. Um, but I would say, compared to the other two machines, it's not quite as nice of a touch, and it's the loudest machine. Uh, it does have the most features, so there's a trade-off between the touch and the sound versus the features. It has the number one key, and it has all the newer keys, the plus equals ex exclamation mark, uh, touch selector, ribbon color selector. Um, if we go to the Brother, it doesn't have the newer keys, but it has the ribbon color selector. This also has a nice appearance, not quite as boxy as the Royal Mercury, um, but not as 1950-ish European elegant as the Olympia. Uh, I think the Olympia is, has the potential of being the best machine in this whole group, except for this carriage return issue. Um, it's certainly the smallest machine, um, and it's only lacking the number one key to have all the keys of the newer machine here. But um, again, it doesn't have a touch adjuster, yet the touch is not bad. It's pretty good, in fact. And with the addition of some of this additional sound deadening, it's proven to be uh, rather quiet. I, If I had to uh, pick all over again, if a person had the, the choice of doing that, which I don't know if you really do have that option in life, once you make your choice, you have your choice made, but if you had to do it all over again, it's very likely that I would say that overall, um, a compromise between what the Olympia is and what this is, uh, the Olympia being more aesthetically pleasing, but a little more mechanically troublesome, the Royal Mercury being less less aesthetically pleasing but very reliable. I'd say between these two, the brother ends up being kind of a good compromise between the two. Um, and I have also in my collection the blue, the bright blue Webster XL747, also made by brother. I did not include it in this test because it's not a tan typer. But suffice it to say that um, it has every bit of the niceties of this machine, as well as having tabs and a repeat spacer. So all three of these tan, tiny tan typers are good machines in their own regard. I really think the Brother is the best compromise between aesthetics and mechanical reliability. Um, again, a lot of this has to do with your individual sample. Uh, you know, you might get another Olympia SF that has no mechanical issues. It might be in better shape. You might get a brother that's in worse shape than this. So your opinion might differ from mine based on just the individual machines you get. But for these three, um, they're all three keepers. It's like if you had three kids, who's your favorite kid? Well, they're all different in their own regard. They're all special. And you wouldn't want to get rid of any of them in most cases. <laughs> but uh, Anyways, uh, you know, if you, if you could only keep one of these, maybe the brother, okay? That's all I can say, but I'm going to certainly keep all three of them. So, well, this is Joe Van Cleve, and this has been the 
trio of tiny tan typers test or whatever I'm going to call this video. Uh, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of this nice day out here in balmy Albuquerque. We'll probably get a snowstorm next week, who knows, but right now it's beautiful weather. And until next time, you have yourselves a great day.